Hey everyone, I was excited to see the HK droids in the Ahsoka trailer and in the first episode. The only issue is that the droid that we see in the show looks a bit different than what was released. You can see that he's a lot darker red. He has the black visor, but the one Hasbro put out just looks a little bit too red. It just looks like a toy and it really looks like it's missing something in the face. So we're going to go ahead and do some dark washing, some dry brushing, and they, neither of them stand. So the first thing I noticed is that the figure is really shiny and it's kind of hard for a wash to stick onto shiny figures. So we're gonna just pop this off. We're gonna store this in the trash until we need it. And then we're gonna go outside really quick and spray this with my favorite finishing spray, which is Mr. Super Clear Matte or Flat. Always make sure you wear a mask when working with this stuff and make sure you do it outside. Don't stand downwind of it. Protect your eyes, just all the things that you would do with spray paint. Now already we can see that it's looking a little bit less shiny. It's not as matte as maybe it could be, but this will work for what we're doing here. So we're gonna use this Vallejo Black Wash. All of the products that I mentioned today will be linked below. This wash is about $7 for a bottle on Amazon. It's gonna be probably cheaper in your local hobby shop. I'm gonna use a really cheap brush. I think this like came with some product that I bought once it's like a total crappy brush but you'll see how much this gets ruined <laughs> along the way we're gonna start putting this wash on and as you can see it's going on really really dark like if this was your first time doing this you'd probably start panicking at this point but this is actually only the first of three coats that we're gonna do so you're gonna see how much that this kind of comes off as we go we're just gonna kind of keep pushing this around the figure just covering all the nooks and crannies and now I'm actually just taking water and just starting to brush it around a little bit more just to spread the pigment that's in this wash across the whole figure because we don't want it to be black black you know we want to like thin it out a little bit and you can see kind of as it's drying it's really hanging into those crevices and just looking really nice it's totally different than what it's going to look look how messed up my brush is already it's totally different than how it's going to look towards the end but this just gives you an idea of what that process is going to look like that way you don't panic when you're trying this out and now what i'm doing is i'm taking a brush and just dabbing the spots where it looks like the black wash is pooling up a little bit and just try to get that off. Do you see how much there is on the head? I'm going to just start like brushing that off and just kind of rubbing it onto the paper towel here. The idea at this point is really to kind of get all of it off. So you're just going to pretend that you made a terrible mistake and that you wish you had never done this and you're just going to try to get all of it off because it's already kind of soaking in to that finish. And since the wash is going to get pulled down towards the back of the figure with gravity, you want to keep rotating it because now do you see where it's pulling up those little spots where it's collecting? You want to just get those out of there. I do like when it sits into the crevices, but you know, we want to blend it and I want to make sure to get under that belt here. Skipping ahead a little bit, I just really continue this across the whole figure, getting as much of it off as possible. It feels kind of silly to be like doing it this way, but it just gives a nice finish when you're done to not really overdo it. Now I'm going to take a simple heat gun. You could use a blow dryer. I choose a heat gun because it doesn't push as much wind out, so it's not going to really like blow all of that liquid that is loose. You want it to kind of just dry into the air instead of just blowing towards the back of the figure. So I use a heat gun. This is only about $25. I will also have this linked below, but it also kind of shows where a lot of that dark wash is collecting. So I'm using a little bit more water just to really like do another pass on this and clean as much of it off as possible. So now let's take a look at where we started versus where we are currently. This is actually looking pretty good. I think it can use another pass. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat that same process. But while we're doing that, I wanna prep the cape. So this is from a Marvel Legends Gore, the God Butcher figure. Th these were like $10 on Amazon recently. I use this cape a lot in my customs. We're just gonna use Vallejo Air Black. I use model air paint, which is actually meant for airbrushes. So it's already thinned. You can thin your own. I've got a little bit of a clog here, so I'm gonna have to clear that out. But I like the thinner paints because of the way that they go onto plastic. I found that when you're using thicker paints, you've seen a lot of really bad customs probably if you're a Black Series collector like on Reddit or on Instagram. This paint is so thin, it does require a lot of coats, but it prevents it from really looking caked on. It can't really cake on because it's so thin. So I use a lot of this paint at first because it really helps get it into all of those little nooks and crannies, especially with a textured piece like this and I just really spread it around. It's okay to kind of have too much at this point because something like this where we're just really kind of covering the whole thing, you want it to really fit into those cracks. So you can see where it's, if I go too fast, it kind of leaves some lighter spots like there on the bottom left that we just covered up. And then it is unfortunately kind of like pooling into a lot of the spots on the folded up part there at the top. So I'm gonna have to take some care to just really like keep digging my brush into there and spreading it out a little bit more. 
Then I'm using the same principle here just to kind of go around the neck, all the parts that are going to be visible. I'm not covering underneath the neck fold there because that's going to be touching the figure. We're not going to see it, so I don't really need to paint the inside there. And by the way, the gloves that I'm wearing are nitrile gloves. They are about 10 cents each, I think, if you buy a big pack of them. And so they just really avoid, you know, getting all of this stuff on my hands. It washes off pretty easily, but then a lot of times it'll just like cake up around my nails. And then of course I have to do like close-ups of my fingers and my reviews, so that's not great. I actually use toothpicks a lot, um, especially for like getting <laughs> those clogs out of there, but I also use them for applying super glue in really small areas when I do have to do that. I'll like squeeze some super glue out onto my palette or onto something else and then just like dip the toothpick in there. So we're just repeating the process here using kind of a little bit more paint than we need and just spreading it out. And sometimes we even have to like rub it out onto the paper towel. You can see where it's kind of pulling up in the crevices there around the hood, but we're just gonna keep brushing it away, spreading it out a little bit. Now we're going to do the heat gun again. You can see the paint kind of dry up in real time here. You want to keep it moving and you also want to be careful not to hit your brushes or the paint that's in the palette with this or else they will dry and you'll ruin your brush and then the palette will have all that dried paint on it which you can see my palette is kind of a mess but all of that paint once it's all caked up you can just peel it off in one big piece. It's really satisfying and then once it dries you can see where it kind of just gets a little bit too thin so I'm just going to reapply paint in areas that have gotten a little bit too white. Again I'm leaving that spot blank because it's going to be against the back of the figure so there's no reason to really paint it and I just don't want paint rub on the figure even though it's already like covered in that dark wash but you know there's no reason to do it so then watch we can just pull this glove right off and there's just no paint on your hand so now we're going to move on to doing another coat of the wash you can see how it almost looks like we never did anything on here it's hard to believe that this was just like covered in this stuff a few moments ago so now we're just going to go ahead and recover the whole thing again but we're going to do something a little bit different this time just i'm I'm always learning as I go, and so it's fun to just try different things, especially when you're not too worried about ruining a figure. But while it looks like this, I'm actually going to just hit it with this heat gun here and just see what this does. You can see it kind of drying before your eyes here as it just kind of lightens up in a lot of areas. And then what this will do is it'll allow the, the wash to really sit in some of those darker areas or some of like the crevices and just hold a lot of that detail in there and it'll dry in there instead of washing away. And so I'm worried here that I overdid it a little bit and so I'm just kind of taking water here and trying to get some of it off. It's looking a little bit dark but we'll see how that dries. And with a lot of coats of the water here you can see a lot of this is coming off so I'm a little bit relieved to see that but it's still really caked up in those crevices which is what I want so I didn't want like to change the color too too dark but I did want it to hold some of the wash in those crevices so that way it just holds that detail and really like makes those parts show. And then hitting it with the heat gun again look at that water just dry right up. You can just see it happening before your eyes, which is pretty cool. Same thing on the back here. The back is always a great place to kind of test your techniques and before you hit the front, since you know most of the time it, you won't be seeing the back of the figure, especially in this case where he's gonna have a cape on. It's kind of a waste of time to even worry about doing the back anyway. But here's where we are at now with the original figure versus the new one. It's a little dark, but I think once we bring in the dry brushing with the silver, which you'll see in a little bit, we'll see how much this lightens up a bit. I'm doing one more coat of water here and then another drying with the heat gun and I think we can call it finished at least for this stage. So here is where it's looking now. So the new Magna Guard actually comes with two staffs so you can use the staff that is shown on the box here but it also comes with a second one that looks actually a lot like the spear that should have come with the HK droid. So you can use that if you don't have access to a 3D printer but I designed my own staff here. So this is 3D printed with resin and I'm just going to go ahead and hit these with some silver paint. This is actually the Vallejo Chrome, and I'm just going to cover all of this using the same technique of using kind of a lot at first just to get into all those grooves and then just kind of thin it out as I go, wiping some of it on the paper towel if I need to. And I'm kind of holding it in the middle and painting on both sides, and then once that dries, I'll go back and can hold it from the ends and paint the middle. I'm hitting it with the heat gun here, but with resin, you want to be careful that you don't warp it because it does get really soft and flexible. And I'm going to take that Vallejo Black and just paint a thin line around the middle just to give it like a little bit of a grip, just to add a little bit of detail. I just think it'll bring it to life a little bit and make it feel a little bit more finished. I didn't really reference what it looks like in the show for the paint work. So now we're going to actually take some black paint on a brush with a long tip here. I'm just going to carefully put that in there. I'm, I don't want to use too much paint that it runs, but I want a little bit of paint so I can kind of push it around a little bit. And so I'm going to flip this the other way now. So I'm always kind of pushing the paint with the tip of the brush here. This isn't a great brush because it has like a little bit of uh, hair on the end that's just sticking out a little bit more than the rest. You'll get better quality control in different brushes, but I'm just kind of pushing it up and under the visor there. And then I accidentally got a little bit too much paint on the bottom here. So while it's still wet, I'm taking just water on this brush and just rubbing it off to get rid of that and just kind of squeezing it through here. And now we're gonna do a second coat of the black paint. 
This is definitely the trickiest part, but it's nowhere near as difficult as like painting eyes on faces or something like that. I think that you can probably handle this on your first time painting. Just be really careful. Then we're gonna take everything outside and spray it once more, again using all of the precautions I mentioned earlier. And now I've shown this process a couple times before. This is called dry brushing, very common technique. What we're gonna do is take some silver paint and get almost all of it off the brush here. And then I immediately flip over the figure so I can just see where we're at in terms of how much paint is on the brush. This is a good amount where like, you don't really wanna see it too much, but you can see how it's picking up on a lot of those raised areas there. It's very subtle, but it really gives a nice clean finish. The worst thing you can do with customizing is just overdoing it in any way. And if this is your first time, I would even try to get even less paint on the brush. So you're gonna see about half as much coming off the brush as you go. You almost wanna be worrying that it's not doing anything and just keep going and you'll see that really come to life. And the more subtle it is, the more coats, or the more like passes you have to do with the brush, the more realistic it's gonna look. Cause this is supposed to look like something that's been slowly worn over time. You can see a lot of places I'm just using the side of the brush and just kind of scraping it down the side, like rubbing that paint off the edge. It does a really nice job of just picking up those raised areas and just making this look like there's a bunch of metal underneath some red paint. This is something that you can do on a lot of your figures. You don't really need the matte spray. All you need is a one little dab of silver paint. I haven't actually added any paint to the brush this entire time. I'm still using what was left just from that first pass. Now I'm using the heat gun just to heat up the neck here so I can pop that head off and get the cape on. And then while that is warm still, I'm gonna go ahead and put the head back on. It's a little bit tricky sometimes when the neck peg is soft, but uh, it goes on without too much issue here. And then I'm gonna wait for that to cool off just so it re kind of hardens up. And now for our big reveal. Again, here is the original figure as it was released by Hasbro on one of my hexagon stands available on my Patreon. And here is the final product looking a lot more realistic, a lot more like it does in the show. I actually made this for my friend Frederick, and so I'm gonna put him on one of these stands that has a back to it. So on the shelf, you don't really notice the back piece, but it just keeps it from falling down since these figures are notorious for being difficult to stand. And on top of that, with this weight of the cape, you kind of want to have a stand there behind him, just supporting him. Let's go ahead and put together all of my Ahsoka figures. This Morgan Elspeth, I designed the map ball and the plinth and resin printed them and painted them. And I think, you know, she should have come with those accessories but it may have been too spoilery for the show. Then we've got Sabine with a poncho, also 3D printed. All of the 3D print files you see here are all available on my Patreon. I repainted Hu Yang last night and made him silver instead of that like warm brown, but I, it was a really tricky paint job and I started recording a video and it was just like such a nightmare. So uh, it's a little bit more of an advanced paint job. So I wouldn't recommend that if you are new to painting, do a couple HK droids first. I just basically used a chrome paint and then made my own cobalt blue for his head and then had to kind of fill in the joints and like, redo the eyes, it was just a whole thing. Here's Hera, I, she just as is. I did a gray wash on Chopper just to darken him up a little bit, make him look a little bit more weathered. Let's put him over here on this side, balance out the orange. Uh, Carson Tiva, I don't think I have room for him in frame. Uh, but that figure was painted by Frederick. He also painted this Ahsoka figure, just absolutely nailed the likeness to Rosario Dawson. I've loved having this Ahsoka on my shelf and I'm glad that he's gonna have one of my HK droids on his shelf. So almost every single figure on here other than Hera I've done some sort of customizing to. As per usual, I have to do everything myself. But I hope this video encourages some of you to try some customizing. For the most part, it's fairly simple. Videos like this don't tend to really do well on my channel compared to like my reviews. So if you did finish this video, please leave a like, leave a comment, all of that helps the algorithm. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you end up trying this out, make sure you post a picture and tag me on Instagram or just send it to me directly. I'd love to see what you accomplish. Here are some other videos from my channel that you can watch while you paint and I'll see you all next time.